There aren't many rides quite as intense as the roller coaster of young love. On today's case, Mrs. Bond says that while her relationship with her high school sweetheart and husband, Mr. Bonds, has certainly had its ups and downs over the last decade, it has recently plummeted lower than she ever thought possible. Mrs. Bond says that her husband's excessive drinking and off-the-rails behavior have gotten so out of control that she's ready to put the brakes on this relationship for good if he can't figure out how to get his addiction on track. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Bonds versus Bonds. Thank you very much. Mrs. Bonds, you say that you are here because you are fed up with your husband's drinking and his lack of income. You say your husband is in complete denial about his alcohol problem, and if you don't find a resolution today, you will take your children and end this marriage. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Bonds, you say you're here today in court to save your marriage. You say your wife focuses too much on your drinking and doesn't appreciate all the good things that you do for her and your family. Yes, Your Honor. So, let's see if we can't figure out where the problems lie in this relationship. You all have been together for 14 years. Why are we here in court today? My husband's lack of financial responsibilities and his behavior is getting out of hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna come on over here to Mr. Bonds. What say you to your wife's allegations? Every relationship has, like, its ups and downs, and I feel like the severity of our problems uh, isn't enough to just end our marriage. I feel like with a little bit of help, we can save this relationship. So, Mrs. Bonds, I hear what your husband has said. You have to bring me back to where you all first met and how we got here after 14 years. Well, we met um, through family members, young love, you were teenagers when you met. Yes. Was he your first boyfriend? Pretty much, yeah. So how'd you get together? How'd you finally decide to, you know, make it permanent? Um, we was friends before mm -hmm. anything. So we were just always hanging out. It was fun. We had a really good time. We built a really good friendship. Mm -hmm. He wrote me a love letter, um, a poem, and he told me how much he, he liked me and he wanted to be with me. And we've been together ever since. So, 14 years means that there's a lot at stake, and we're not just talking about years and time together. You all have two children. Yes, we do. Two boys. You started off by saying his lack of income has really become a big issue. Yes, y'all. How did that happen? After um, the world opened back up oh. due to COVID... Okay. ...it was time to go back to work. He just decided on his own that he was going to stay home and hold the house down while I work. But that's not entirely true. We made a compromise. For one, her job, uh, she had to work overnight. I usually do my snow removal in the winter time where that would be my normal income during that time, but I put that on hold because, for one, we have a two-year-old and we don't have anybody to watch our two-year-old, you know, all the time. So I ended up working part-time. That was the compromise, and I would also stay at home and take care of everything at home. Was this is... a conversation that the two of you we, all had and had made this, a plan? We had this conversation. No. And I was still working. Yes, we did have this conversation. No. We had it. And I was still working part-time while I was taking care of the house, making sure it was clean, making sure the kids taking care of, helping them with their homework, spending time with them, also making sure that she had food when she came home, meals and all that stuff. But here's my we question. Did... Mr. Bonds, it sounds like you have determine that the, quote, best thing for your family is for you to be the stay-at-home caregiver, whereas... That was not the original agreement. We was... Because her hours changed, that changed everything as far as what I would usually do. So I compromised so that she could... Because this is what she wanted to do. This is her dream job. So I took an L for her. And it was no way that both of us could work full time. He decided to do that on his own. I didn't ask him. I told him, don't worry about the kids. Just find a job. But I did do. find a job. We didn't have... It was part-time, though. But wait a minute. Most families still do need double income. Yes. But her job is only seasonal. So when that was over, I was gonna go back and work full time. It was only... So how long has this been going on? It's kind of been going downhill basically since we got married. We've been married for almost four years. So... And there was never a time when it was basically some consistent income on, on the part of your husband? Yes, it was. We... Everything was 50-50. We went half on everything. Mm -hmm. I felt like he felt like I got... I have a good job, and he just kind of slacked a little bit and let me take control 
of paying the bills. So right now, you're starting to feel resentment that all the financial burden of the family is falling on you. Yes. Now I say something, Your Honor. Yes, there of was, course. There was no way that I was gonna be able to work a full-time job and she worked a full-time job with her hours with us having a two-year-old. We didn't have anybody to watch our two-year-old on a consistent basis. I mean, we was almost virtually impossible. I mean, it was still in the midst of COVID. We couldn't put him in the daycare. So it was, it was a compromise that I had to do. It wasn't something that I chose to do. Okay, but Mr. Bonds, let me just find out what's going on right now. I'm about to be working full-time and she's, she's off. Is your husband about to take over the responsibility financially, Ms. Bonds? Because you look like you got attitude right now. You showing, looking at me like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, I'm still going half with bills and everything. I'm still doing my part. Yes, I am laid off right now, but I'm still doing my part. But Mrs. Bonds, I need you to explain how you feel mm -hmm. about this compromise. Because your husband has laid out that you all sat down and made a plan. What is the dynamic in your household now? That you're the one that bears the financial burden? I pay most of the bills, yes. Okay. Is that something that you want to continue doing? No. Okay, Mr. Bonds, your wife is not interested in bearing the entire financial burden. So we need to look at whether or not there are going to be options for taking care of your children because that is something that has to happen. Do you have a plan of action for how to prepare for childcare? If both of you are working, what would be your plan of action? When I start back working, the plan is to our son go to school. I figure out who's going to pick him up from school and they'll have to put my two-year-old in a daycare. Because you don't want to sustain the whole burden of the finances on you again. Right. So right now, Mr. Bonds, are you prepared to go to work full-time or no? Yes, I start my full-time job next month. So we've already talked about plans for, you know, moving forward. He had his own landscaping business. Clients will call his phone and say, hey, when are you going to do this? And he just be at home chilling, watching TV, drinking. Okay, Mr. Bonds, now I'm finally getting what the real allegation is. I feel like the past couple months I've learned to control it. No, no, yeah. there is no controlling. If you well, are an alcoholic, that's an illness and you need to get help for it. The real problem is his drinking. Okay, because I was about to say, what's his, going his on? His drinking has caused him to not work. He had, he had his own landscaping business, and clients will call his phone and say, hey, when are you going to do this? And he just be at home chilling, watching TV, drinking, and I'd be like, hey, it's been three days. When are you going out? When you're going to go work? He's lacking because of his drinking. So you're basically saying this man that you married has decided to spend his days drinking instead of hustling. Yes. Okay, Mr. Bonds, now I'm finally getting what the real allegation is. I feel like I don't, I have a drinking problem. Sometimes you can get control, but I really, like, past couple months, I've learned to control it. No, no, and... there is no controlling. If you well, are an alcoholic, that's an illness and you need to get help for it. Do you right. agree that you drink to excess? Yes, I do. Okay, so then tell me what you are doing in order to resolve that, sir. Well, I really haven't been drinking. I've been trying to get my faith right with God. Instead of drinking, I'll try to do healthy things, like I'll eat healthier, I'll exercise. Have you tried rehab? I haven't tried rehab because I feel like I, right now I can't afford to go to rehab. I have to work. I have to provide for Alcoholics myself. Anonymous is, is free. Right. I've been um, trying to do some AA meetings, but... What not... do you mean you're trying to do? Because you ain't working, so help am, me to understand why, why you can't try. You right can't now. go do that. I am working right now. I'm in a transition of going from one job to another, to my full-time job. So I'm then working. why aren't you at the AA on a regular basis? If you know you drink to excess, you know it's an issue with your family, why aren't you at AA on a regular basis? I've been, I ain't gonna lie, I've been procrastinating a little bit, but I'm, I'm definitely... Not a little bit, a lot bit. You, you've chosen not to do it. I feel like sometimes I just drink excess, not all the time. That's called the definition of an alcoholic. When you drink to excess, that's an alcoholic. Okay? Mrs. Bonds, I, I, I get the feeling you have an example. Yes, I do. Last year, we went to Cancun for our anniversary. Okay. And this was the first time we was out the country, and it was a hot mess. That should have been fun. What are you talking about? His drinking. Um, so it was like a little after party um, we had went to, and it was an adult hotel, so it was women. They was revealing themselves mm -hmm. and everything. And 
he told me to go up there, and I told him, no, I'm not going up there. And he was like, it's okay, you can show a little boobs. And I'm like, that's not even me. Like, why would you say that? So he got mad, he said I was boring um, because I wouldn't get up and dance. He made me cry in front of everybody. Um, so we decided to leave, and I didn't feel him behind me when we was walking, and I turned around and he threw up all on the floor. Just so embarrassing. The next day, he just don't know how to just relax and, and, and drink. And Growing socially up, drink. Yes. And, and drinking costs money. Everything was free. He wound up spending $1,500. How you spend $1,500 at, at an all-inclusive? Well, exactly. for one, it wasn't 15 it was 1200 And then most of it went for her. I brought her, like, a bracelet that was, like, it was, like, 400 I bought her some Michael Kors shades. That was like 300. Then I bought myself some Ray Bans. Was like 300. So like we both made bad financial decisions. Like she always complaining about. Most of most of the well, bill was... went to him popping champagne. He no, don't it even. Didn't. That was only. He four, don't even drink champagne. 400 out of 1200. Out of 1200. That's not most of. That's only a third. He was popping champagne. God. Mr. Mr. Bonds. Mrs. Bonds. Let me just ask a question. Throughout COVID, everybody had some financial challenges, but you thought it was smart to go spend money in Cancun. It was smart to do the all-inclusive because you're gonna get your drinks free, you're gonna get your food free, get yes. your activities free. Correct. Why you need to spend extra money? I work I hard and I pay my I'm bills saying. first and then I play later. But you still make bad finance. I feel like it's not my fault that we're financially struggling. I feel like it's both of our fault because from the time we've been together for 14 years, we don't have a financial plan. We, it's like always her money and my money. This is just something that just, just happened recent. We, Mrs. Bond said this is this financial situation has been going on for three years, and I can't been, imagine. I've always been working. I've always had a job. We just never, we never built our money together. You have a six-year-old and a two-year-old. Yes, Your Honor. All of this sounds like toxicity around these kids. He sent me a text message and he promised he wasn't going to drink again. No more alcohol, period. Has there been alcohol since then? Yes. But, like, very little. It... No, 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 no. What you write? No more alcohol, period. You see that, Robert? Is there another page to this that says, except when I've been home with the kids all day, I can have another drink? No, Yana. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. For Christmas, I had to go to work that night. On my way to work, I got a phone call from my son, tried to talk to Anthony, and he was unresponsive, so I had to turn back around go home, and I got the kids and I took them somewhere else. What was going on with your husband? He just turned up a little bit too much. Meaning he got so drunk that he couldn't even talk to you on the phone while you going to work? I don't know if it was all the drinking or him just being stubborn. I don't know, but... Well, let's ask. Mr. Bonds, what was that about? Probably being stubborn. I'm not clear on why... So, like, I know want... I was drinking and, like, um... You knew she'd be mad, right? If I did, if I drank too much, yeah. So you end up, end up trying to avoid the situation because you had already turned up. Right. And it's Christmas. The children gonna have a ruined Christmas because you made bad choices. Because now your family is all upset with you. That doesn't sound very responsible, sir. I, yeah, I agree. That was, like, my version of what the bottom is. And, like, ever since then, I've definitely had, like turn my life around. I feel myself elevating. I mean, I know it's only been like a few months, but I'm like, it's, it's just gonna take time, but I, I just take it this one day at a time. When's the last time you had a drink? It's recent. So I thought we were cutting down on the drinking. I just had just like a little bit. I wasn't like turning up or nothing. I just wanted to... Just Ms. Bonds, do you, do you believe him? On my birthday. That he stopped drinking? I could say he slowed down a lot. You've been in this relationship for quite a few years right now. You have two children. Yeah. You've got to make a determination whether or not this is the life that you want. Yeah. After Christmas, um, I told him that I was done. Okay. Um, I told him I no longer wanted to be with him because if I don't do it for me, I have to do it for our children. So I told him that I, I, I want to be done, and he sent me a text message, and he told me that he promised he wasn't going to drink again. We have evidence showing um, the test message. Let me see. 
I want better for myself and our kids. And if I keep forgiving you, you will drag us down. Your husband's response was, I understand this is the last time. Please know I can do this, but I don't want to do it alone. No more alcohol, period. Has there been alcohol since then? Yes. Okay, Mr. Bonds. But, like, very little. It was... No, 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 no. I'm only going on what you wrote. Right, yeah. What you write. Yeah. I didn't do the text message. No more alcohol, period. Okay. But sometimes I just be, like, stressed, I... like, being in the house all day with the kids. I just, like, I might just have, like, a little drink or something sometimes. Excuse but it's not me. Like... I just want to make sure, because I need to read it again. Yeah, say... I, I know, <laughs> I want to read it again. Um, no more alcohol, period. You see that, Robert? Is there another page to this that says, except when I've been home with the kids all day, I can have another drink? No, Yana. It don't say that, right? <laughs> no. Yana, my husband, he is mm. a good man. He's a good father. He's a good person overall. I think the drinking is really taking a toll on him. And I want him to get better, and I don't want to leave his side. I would like for him to get through it together. Um, but that's going to require Mr. Bonds making a determination that he's going to really do rehab. Because it's not the kind of thing that he's going to be able to do by himself. That's why you go to rehab. That's right. why you attend meetings, because these people are going to give you additional tools to help you through those moments when you've been home all day with the children. Yeah. Or you feel like, I need to have a drink. I'm not an expert in this, but I'm an expert in finding resources. So I'm asking you right now, Mr. Bonds, are you committed to actually stopping drinking or are you the way you sort of nonchalantly said to me? I'm committed. Eh? I'm committed. So what are you prepared to do? I'll go to rehab and go to AA meetings. Ms. Bonds, you believe him? Yeah, I need consistency. I need... Stability. She's concerned that you might have one of them stubborn days again like you did right on Christmas. No, nah, that you... ain't gonna never happen again. I promise you that. Okay, well, that's just like you promised her and me, no alcohol, <laughs> period. So, trusting you on your promises is kind of difficult right now, as you can understand, because I just I had an exhibit A. To rebuild the trust in a relationship, you're gonna have to have a willingness to work on the relationship. If you're not gonna do it, don't promise it. So, yes, I'm right. gonna ask you again. Would you be willing to participate in an alcoholic rehabilitation program and make a commitment to it? Would you be willing to do that? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Bonds? Yes. If I can provide you all with the resources for an alcohol rehabilitation program that will cause your husband to have to have some accountability, would you want to be there with him? Yes. So this relationship can be saved. But Ms. Bonds, she needs to be able to rely on you. And you need to be the man that your children can grow up to respect. And that's... I'm trying to be that person. Okay. Because you know, I never, like, had a father in my life, you know, or I didn't have, like, examples of stuff like that. I'm still learning as I'm going on how to be a good father or a good husband. And well, I the like first thing you got to do is not lie. All right. <laughs> and the second thing is you got to keep your promises. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Bonds? Yes, Your Honor. Keep me informed. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to step up. I'm gonna step up. Uh, I'm gonna step out. I get you. All right. I'm gonna do it right this time. Okay. I have to tell you, addiction is a powerful, powerful thing. Yeah. And it's breaking up families, especially in this pandemic. Right. When you've been together that long, mm -hmm. yeah, it's addiction, but they still have that sense of hope. And that powerful motivation is those two little kids. Right but he's got to be just as motivated to get clean mm -hmm. so that he can be that good role model because it is not a good role model right. to pass out to the point where your six-year-old can't wake you right. up. Right. Do it for yourself, do it for your family, and do it for your wife. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you.